Hello, I wanted to give you a quick demonstration of how to use CLAN and ELAN together to do your transcriptions. So just a reminder, the reason to use CLAN is because you want to do turn by turn transcriptions of talk. The reasons to use ELAN are if you want to transcribe bodily movements, things that happen at the same time that don't have the same constraints as one at a time talk. So here we go, I'm going to use Game Night and you should have in your data folder the Game Night transcript as a Word document, Game Night as a PDF. Those are both just full transcripts, not 100% accurate but a good starting point. And then we have Game Night.cha, chat. That is the native file format of CLAN which we're going to start with. We also have Game Night.mov which is the video data. The WAV file is just generated by CLAN when you open the MOV from within it to do your transcription, and I'll show you how that works. In fact, even if, if I, oh no, I won't, I'll delete that now and then you'll actually see it happen. So here we go, let's start by opening our transcript file in CLAN. So what have we got? We've got the file headers. So this just tells you to begin the file, it says which language, is it, which language it's in, and it tells us who the participants are, and that works in abbreviation, uh, that's not what ABB stands for, AB actually stands for Abby here, so Abby is an adult, Terry is an adult. Now the reason that there are these roles is that originally CLAN was used for transcribing clinical interactions, childhood interactions, where you might have a series of roles, in this case we just have adults, we're not specifying whether they're doctors or patients or children or whatever, they're just adults. So you can just put that in for the time being or you can change it if you want to put something more descriptive in. So these are our participants. Here are their ID lines and that's where you would put in demographic information. Again, don't worry about that. There's some in there just to begin with. If you look at the tiers, you'll see that these are associated with different control keys. So if I press control one, I'll get a line for Abby, control two, I'll get a line for Terry, control three, I'll get a line for Maureen. So you can always check your ID headers to see how you can do your shortcuts when you're transcribing. Then we have your name. So let's fill that in. My name is Saul Albert. This is just if you're collaborating with a lot of people. Comment, I've just put the name of the video data. And then you put in the name of the video file, and this is in the same folder as your transcript. So game night.mov, here we see game night.chat and game night.mov, they're in the same folder. That's important. And I say it's video. If it was just audio, I'd put audio. Now I can begin my transcript. I start a new line, I press control one, and I get an ABB line. Now I happen to know that Abby speaks first, but let's just try opening up our video data in CLAN. So I hold down the escape key and I press zero. And you can see that little clock. What's happening here is that CLAN is exporting the movie. You can't actually see it. It's on another screen that I'm not using for the screencast, but you can see game night CLAN.wav has reappeared. It's created this WAV and this waveform so that I can start my transcription. And in another window, I'll just drag it in here, I have my movie file. So here's my waveform. I can increase or decrease the volume by pressing uh, minus or plus volume keys. I can also um, stretch or compress the waveform so that I can select more of it. What I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to select a chunk and it will play it for me. All right, so it's your turn. Now, what we want to do is we want to begin transcribing our data. Now, I've got some that I prepared earlier because otherwise this video would take forever. So I'm just going to copy and paste a bit of transcript that I've already done into here and then I'm going to show you some other really important bits. So that's what I would get if I just type this all out or you know I've copied and pasted some of this from the original game night and then I've refined it so that it's more accurate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to put in those little bullets that show you the turn timing. So all right phone rings it's your turn. If I select that in the waveform, all right, so. Okay, I don't have enough. I'm going to hold down the shift key and click again. All right, so it's your turn. Okay, that's pretty much this whole this whole section. So now if I hold down control if I just do control I, I get one of these little bullets. Now what does that mean? If I expand it by holding escape A or you can always go to mode uh 
going to show hide line numbers and uh, there's a little, yeah, hide bullets. You see that? Hide bullets, escape A. You can select that in the menu, it hides it. Or you can uh, expand bullets and it expands it. What it says is from 0.23 seconds to 3181 milliseconds, so basically 3.1 seconds, that's the area of audio described by this little highlight. Now, if I select this, it selects that area. If I deselect some part of my, you know, if I start working with something else and then I select that again, it reselects that section. So it's really useful to put those little bullets in. Let me hide that bullet. I'm going to put bullets in for all these other turns. So it, that's what happens next. Okay, I want a bit less than that, so I'm going to gonna drag that. So there's an it there. Um, I think I've just got that it. I want a bit less. It. it. Okay, that'll do. Now I'm going to go uh, and get Terry's line. It's Michael's, she's saying, but in the transcript it's changed to Daniel's for an anonymity purposes. So I'll probably this is an overlap, so I want the same section but a bit more. Michael's calling for our order. Okay, that's it. And now we just keep going. So let's get Abby's laughter. That's what happens next. Yes. <laughs> Good. And then I want just the overlapping laughter from Maureen. <laughs> okay, that's four pulses of laughter. <laughs> okay, so now I have bullets for all of my lines. Now, here's the cool thing I can do. Once I've done all my transcript, I'm actually going to use the scripting feature of um, CLAN. I sorry, go to Windows and open up Commands. Now, here's a little trick. I want to make sure that my working directory is the same as the directory in which my files sit. So I'm going to hit Working, um, and then I'm going to navigate. So say I wasn't already in the right place. I would go to the location where I keep my game night files. So here they are. You can see how I organize all my files here. There we go. Select folder. That's where my game night.mov file is and my game night.chat file is. Select folder. And then what I want to do is type in a command that will convert my CLAN file into an ELAN file. Now, if you've already typed in your command, you can hit the recall button, which shows you all the last few commands you typed. Now I actually have typed this command a number of times so I can just get my recall list and uh, bring it up that way. Now I typed this in relation to a different .chaff file so I just want to delete that and just write game night .chaff because that's the file that I want to convert and it is in this working directory. I don't want to touch any of these other files. Then I'll hit run and what you'll see is in the background here game night.eaf which is an elan file has appeared so now i can actually quit uh, clan completely and i can open up my file in elan and what you'll see is that i now have my transcript all nicely laid out on multiple tiers. We have an Abby tier, Terry tier, Maureen tier, Stacy tier, and a Pam tier. And each of their turns is perfectly laid out in overlap. We can see those overlaps in this partition mode where you get, you've got this kind of timeline going across to the right, which is really, really handy. So I can then just play one turn. Michael's calling for our order using this part of the player yes. <laughs> or I can add tiers um, I can have a look at uh, all of the tiers that I have available I can add one if I wanted to do gestures for example so let's say I'm going to add and I'll just describe her gestures there we go there's the Abbey gestures tier and I think I can move that up so it's underneath Abby, which kind of makes more sense. I can see what is Abby doing while she's talking. She's turning, isn't she? All right, so it's your turn. So 
So then what I might do is I might add, let's see, when does Abby do her turn there? I'll add Abby turns. Then we start getting this layered picture of all the things that are happening in our transcript. And that can be helpful both for looking through your transcript, segmenting it into chunks of interaction, and also just for building up a really complex picture of what it is that you're examining. Now, you don't have to provide all that detail in, in your analysis when you're writing it up, but for sure it's very useful when you're referring back to it or when you're doing a data session and you want to show something specific by pointing out the intersection of lots of different interactional uh, behaviours. And here the talk provides us with a kind of basic framework for then building up this richer picture of all the other kinds of interaction that you might be looking at. So I hope that's helpful and um, I'm going to leave my transcript uh, as is in the game light folder so you can download it, have a look at it, see how it works, play with it and then do your own. Okay, thank you very much.